Is the Canon 50mm f1.8 for the RF good enough to photograph an entire wedding day? Let's find out. Ohio, gozaimas, and welcome to the wedding day. I'm your host as always, Taylor Jackson, and I find that every time I say something in poor Japanese, somebody reaches out in the comments and is like, hey, I live in Japan, and next time I'm gonna hang out with them, so that works again. That's awesome. Today, a bit of a challenge, not really a challenge. I've tested this lens quite extensively and I'm very happy with the results. Maybe a, a disclaimer, I'm the second photographer today. My wife, Lindsay, is the main photographer. I'm the second photographer today. And I'm going to be using this 50 millimeter F1.8 STM all day for the Canon RF. It's going to be on the Canon R6 that is what you're watching right now. This is the 14 millimeter Samyang, which is also a great lens. And this lens is a 43 millimeter filter. So you get to, to load up the 43D3 if you wish. It's a reference not a whole lot of people will get, but I hope that it brought joy to the two people that did get that reference. And let's go to the wedding day. Arigato gozaimasu! Who is that? Can you use the RF 50mm f1.8 for wedding photography? Maybe that's not the correct question, because you can really use anything that you want for wedding photography. The correct question might be, should you use the 50 millimeter F1.8 for the Canon RF series for wedding photography, for a full day of wedding photography? So far, what I'm noticing is how easy and lightweight this kit is. And paired with this Canon R6, I am already creating some images that I really do enjoy. Another thing that I'm noticing right off the top is that people don't really pay attention to me which is a great thing if you want to get some photojournalistic moments that if I had a 7200 or even a 24 to 70, I would clearly be a person of maybe not necessarily conflict, but somebody that you would always be aware of their presence. I feel like with the 50, I can get really close and uh, I'm doing this voiceover obviously after I've done the wedding and I'll notice this more throughout even candids that you can get remarkably close to people and they don't even really notice that you're around. Now moving over to the guys getting ready. One thing that we're gonna see in a second, there is one problem with this lens, at least in my opinion, and it is a very small problem inside. It looks amazing, all out of focus areas are beautiful. This is my preset, by the way. All of the straight out of camera images you're going to see at the end of this video, uh, but this is the images with my preset on them. Uh, what you're gonna see here, maybe not yet, but the little pieces of light that are coming through the trees <laughs> when you do a photo like this all of a sudden the background becomes very distracting that is the only thing that i've noticed with this lens that i don't just really enjoy the 1.2 does a way better job of rendering those out of focus backgrounds and making basically all distracting elements feel nice and creamy um, as you can see again really not the nicest background uh, bokeh right there that said, that is the only thing that I've noticed that I don't really enjoy about this lens. I will also mention that that does seem to be stuck to just kind of the greens. Um, I don't find it to be as distracting in the, the girls getting ready that you saw, the backgrounds there, totally fine. I find it only kind of with those greens and yellows with highlights coming through. So maybe uh, take that information and, and do with it what you want to do with it. Because you're you. Live your life. Now walking into the church, we have a problem. One I haven't encountered in my career yet. Scaffolding on the left, scaffolding on the right, scaffolding all in the balcony that is directly above my camera right now. And this kind of goes back to the, could you photograph this ceremony on a 50? Yeah, probably. Should you? No, this is a real wedding day and I would definitely be sacrificing the quality of work by including all those elements. Maybe it would be pure photojournalism at its greatest, but I want to make something a little bit prettier than pure photojournalism. So I am going to switch to the 70 to 200 and show you no images because you're not here to, to see that. This may be a future wedding day, I don't know. Comment below if you're interested in seeing this as a full wedding day where I talk a little bit more about the process and not so much just about this specific lens. So. The main difference, the obvious difference, is the fact that this is an 85 1.8 and not an 85 1.2, which means you are getting a little bit more detail in your autofocus backgrounds. I personally find after staring at a lot of images, uh, specifically from the Samyang 85 1.4, as well as the 85 1.2L that I used most of last season, is that on a normal human being, I feel like all of these backgrounds are totally fine and they will look very nice to people. I noticed specifically for me as somebody that's looked at a lot of those 1.2 and 1.4 images, 
that the backgrounds are a little bit more distracting and it's not necessarily that it's only a 1.8 aperture it it the way that the the background renders definitely does something that makes it a little bit more distracting in this image specifically these images here i am very happy with it it looked very nice in this image and pretty much i would say 95 to 90 eight even percent of the images that you're going to get are going to be totally fine. I think that it's mostly for if you're seeing kind of that speckled light or repeating patterns. Um, in a few images from now, you'll see some bird feeders that are kind of up in the top of the castle. And I find those to be very distracting and they're kind of the first thing that my eye looked at. Um, that said, if that's not something that your eye is immediately drawn to, then maybe this is an okay lens and maybe I'm just kind of a little jaded. The bird feeders are off to the left here on the top of the pillar. And as you can see, they're a little distracting, but like, or I, I feel like I'm just kind of pixel peeping at this point and trying to find errors in a lens that I'm overall very happy with. And this brings us to my favorite part of the day, the pizza section. Here's a song I wrote about pizza just for a couple of seconds. Please humor me. It's the cheesiest, it's the most wonderful. It's the best and at the very least magical. I love pizza and we'll probably get married. Have a baby lasagna and espresso. Hey yo, I really like pizza. And that's enough of the pizza song. I enjoy by this point in the wedding day that I am somebody that people just are normal with having around and they can just go about their normal lives and not be too concerned about what I am doing and I can get photos like this. I'm very happy with the next photo, uh, the wedding party just sitting on a bench here and just grabbing a quick photo of each individual member doing something different, which I very much enjoy. And it wasn't posed or scripted. They just kind of positioned themselves perfectly like that. Into a high contrast environment to show you that there are no issues with this lens as far as I can tell in normal use for, um, I guess, fringing and, and whatnot that you would expect from a shot of the, the last one that you saw. You can pause on any of these images if you want to look at them longer. I just figured keep the, the pace moving, ready to play, ready to play. Another reference involving Paul Rudd. Check him out, he's a new actor. Probably haven't seen him in anything before. And here I am, straight up stealing Lindsay's setups. Now I'm gonna go quickly post them online and take all the credit so the couple sees the second photographer's images first, not Lindsay's. I'm kidding, don't ever do that if you're second. This is a live reaction of what Lindsay's face would look like if I were to do something like that. A few more examples from green space outside with backgrounds uh, because I feel like that is kind of the most important thing for wedding photography or these are most of your key images usually if you're shooting in a, a outside space and not in a city and uh, as you can see the backgrounds still feel distracting to me but again that is just my eye and my opinion um, and one more example of those backgrounds forgot to photoshop off the tree tag my bad Back to my favorite part of this lens, cocktail hour here, just walking around, no one paying attention to me because I don't have a camera that directs attention towards me. And uh, well, I guess maybe this is to speak to my preference. I would rather shoot something with a slightly wider lens and get a little bit closer. You feel more true to the scene. It feels more like you're actually there rather than hanging out and you could easily shoot all these frames on like a 200 to 500 and wildlife lens in, in the back. But to actually be the, I, I, this, maybe out of scope of this video. These photos are all shot from the hip with my LCD and the eye detect just working because can it autofocus? Yeah. So to wrap this up, some of my thoughts on this lens. What you get for the price is incredible. If I look back at digital SLRs and the 1.850s that I purchased for that, they are nowhere even remotely close to as good as this one is. If I was using something like a Sigma 1.450 adapted through the RF adapter, I would probably recommend that you stay with that. If you don't have a 50 or if this is the only 50 in your price point, by all means, like go buy this lens right now. Uh, if the 51.2 is in your price range, I might suggest that you go for that if you are somebody that does a lot of weddings and portrait environments that you really do need to make pretty looking images. As you saw today, the, the variable of the ceremony, you walk into a space, you don't really know exactly what you're getting. If it would have been an outdoor ceremony with a green speckled backdrop, with a lot of contrast and light poking through, I would not have been happy with the images. I would have chosen a different tool. And uh, I think that's kind of what this wedding photography thing is all about, choosing the right tool for the job. This was the right tool for, I would say, 80% of the day. And for $199, I would say to get through 80% of the day with a $199 lens, like, that's awesome. All right, and that is all for the wedding day. Now on to the straight out of camera images, and uh, we'll put on some more, more exciting music here. Oh. 
show me how we do now, baby. Tell me what you got to lose now, honey. You, you. Let the 